Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So continuing on in our survival basic series here. Uh, spoke to somebody that gave a mention to hey why Sarge or Derek always mention you know Tim Smith in his videos. So uh, one to that is we're friends. Uh, we hang out as much as possible now, which is good for me. But uh, in the other side of that is you know I've learned quite a bit since we've met, and I'm not the type of guy that will come shoot a video right after that and act like it's it's mine and I've been doing it all my life so I always like to give credit where it's due uh, you guys that follow me know that so that's kind of what that's about but I figured for this episode uh, Tim was kind enough to come by so we're gonna talk about a few things and instead of saying you know hey my buddy Tim says this uh, he's here so you can hear it from the horse's mouth so thanks for coming by Tim thanks for having me no excited problem. to be here yeah so moving off the last video, uh, we kind of broke down the uh, survival <coughs> priorities. And again, I referred to Tim in that video and kind of how he thinks about that and what he teaches at his school. So having said that, I'm just going to pass the mic to him, if you will. Oh, we got our dog right yep, here. okay. Come on, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> New friends. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna pass him the mic and he can kind of elaborate, you know, kind of what he does at his school and, and we'll go from there. Uh, sure, we have seven basic elements of the Jack Mountain Bushcraft School that comprise what we teach and they are skill, journey, craft, nature, culture, sustainability, and self. And I don't wanna to talk too much about them, but really quickly, skill is how you do things. For example, how to swing an ax, uh, correctly how to do this how to do that journey or the traveling arts so guiding uh, snowshoe trips canoe expeditions planning packing provisioning and all the skills with regards to pulling them off craft is building the gear that you need uh, so you don't have to shop at the big box stores um, nature learning the natural history of the world around you culture has two aspects number one the human elements of leadership and expedition planning um, such as leadership and group dynamics and then also the culture or the history of the place that you're traveling through or living in so you know who lived here what did the pioneers do what did the natives do sustainability is how do we live there for a long period of time and not end up with just a clear-cut 40 acre piece of ground and, and big piles of trash um, and lastly is the self component and self is thrown around a lot and people think that it has to do with getting in touch with your inner paleo guy or or something like that but it really has absolutely nothing to do with that the self component that we work on is finding the very specific parameters to you personally and you know we live in a in a world of generalizations right if we go into your library or my library we're going to pull down a book and there'll be somebody with Who's, who's an expert with you know maybe less than helpful advice and they're gonna tell you you need this much water every day they're gonna tell you that you need you, this is how you make a bed it has to be this big and this thick and you know I'm always ready to throw the BS flag there because I have a six-year-old daughter and if we follow the same parameters for example for how much water you need in a day um, you know vastly vastly different so, you know, water is one thing physiologically, but if we're talking about living outdoors, you know, let's talk quickly about shelter. You know, it's, it's something that we've done a lot of, I know you've done a lot of, right. and the, what passes for shelter instruction in some of the books is some line drawing that somebody cribbed off an older line drawing with no real experience of how this thing works in the real world, right? So, for example, with shelter, you know, I always teach, let's start with the bed. So how do you build a bed? You know, first you have your box spring on the bottom and then your mattress on top. But how big does the bed need to be? You know, the only way you can figure that out is by going and doing it. How soft or how thick does the mattress need to be? You know, everybody's going to have their opinion. And, you know, there's guys that there's one end of the spectrum the story the princess and the pea right so the princess gets this beautiful mattress and there's a pea under it so she needs another one and another one and eventually maybe 10 big soft mattresses and she still can't sleep because there's a pea underneath it 
the other end of the spectrum, I'm told there's guys in India that sleep on beds of nails, right? So if that guy from India came out here to spend the night in the woods and you're like, well, you build a bed like this, he'd say, you know, I've been sleeping on a bed of nails for 30 years. <laughs> so at that point, you know, what good is that, you know, less than helpful advice? Right, general. So yeah, and I've done it. So I've talked about long log fires in the past and, and probably several videos. And uh, I have a friend actually that tried it out three different times and failed. Uh, but the situations were different. We're in different geographic locations to begin with. What I have for resources available, he did not. Uh, he was cutting all his wood down and all that sort of thing. But he took it as a challenge to himself to see if this long log fire worked with a wool blanket in the winter time. Uh, and it didn't work for him, but that's the big ingredient here that we're trying to discuss is, is going out and doing it for you because what works for me may not work for you and vice versa with Tim as well. So what, what he teaches, you know, maybe you need to tweak something of what he says to work better for you. So that's kind of where I'm going with the video as well. So I've always said take what I say with a grain of salt and, and get out there and actually do it, you know. Uh, not saying you can't learn from a YouTube video because uh, you certainly can. But you're not going to understand the finite details and, and the devil in the details as we've discussed already. So uh, that was kind of my point to it. And somebody that's been established for as long as Tim and doing it as long as he has and has done it, you know, time and time and time again, he understands that stuff. And we need to do the same thing, you know, instead of because the latest expert on YouTube says this is how you do it you chalk that up as okay now I know how to do that because I don't believe that's the case absolutely you know we've had people spend the night out um, long log fire minimalist winter shelter front came through at about midnight first lights at 6 a.m. and it got down to 42 degrees below zero and they didn't even know it because they had such a big hot fire right. I mean in the morning it's not like they slept at the Holiday Inn or whatever you know they were kind of tired from waking up and throwing wood on the fire and and they obviously, you know, breathing combustion gases, smoke, sparks, all those things are yeah. part of the recipe if you're sleeping in front of a big fire. But, you know, sleeping out with no blanket, in, the, in this case, at, at 40 below zero, um, you know, I think that's, that's proof of concept for me anyway, that, you know, if you can do that and not be dead in the morning, then right. that's, a, that's a pretty good thing. <laughs> yeah, it works. Uh, just a couple, two, three weeks ago, I had a, my woodsman course. Uh, there was three of us, uh, and we had the long log fire deal going on. But I had one of the students kept piling the wood on at night, and it, we just had tarps and wool blankets, you know, and I was middle of the night, pulled my shirt up, exposed skin, kicked the blanket off, and I had to crawl out of that thing because it was just too warm, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. I had a similar, uh, about 12 years ago, uh, two night overnight in the White Mountains, and we built a long log fire with shelters on opposite sides. Here's the fire, and the guy next to me, got up in the middle we cut a ton of wood really unique location where we were able to get like a cord of wood in literally a half an hour because there was just so much dead standing there but yep. I woke up in the middle of the night thought I was having a nightmare that I was on like the seventh layer of hell <laughs> all I can see is this huge wall of flame it's you know I feel like it's it's probably 180 degrees in there right. and I didn't know where I was when I woke up and I was just like what's going on you know and uh, so anyway you know the the irony of sleeping out in the cold and having it be too hot, you know, and, you know, <laughs> you're too warm, you know, the, the irony there isn't lost on me. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a good time. But, again, so the, the point of it, really, uh, this video and the series is the doing, right? So getting out there and, and doing things for yourself and figuring it out for yourself. Because, again, what I say may not work for you and anybody else. So a YouTube video and the least... You can get good ideas, you can certainly learn from them, but getting out there and actually trying these things out for yourself Go. is where you're gonna make your money. Go! Uh, and again, Go. that's kind of the point Go. of the video. Go! So we have a thing where I say to really know a shelter, you need to spend four consecutive nights in it. Because if you do one night and then you bail and you say, oh, that shelter stunk, you know, you're really not committed to making it work. And if you really wanna make it work, there's a magic. Come on, come on, dogs. Come on, dogs. Oh. There's something magic about four consecutive nights. So I build a shelter, right, first night. So 
let me step back a second. I'm out with Derek, and Derek says, here's how you build a shelter, right? And he's showing me the, the bare basics, the bare parameters of how it's going to work. So I do my best, uh, but, you know, there's certain things that you can only understand by going out and doing it that I'm not going to learn from a lecture, from a book, or anything like that. So I build the shelter the first night, and it's brutal, right? The bed's terrible. I can't sleep on it. The, the roof is leaking. You know, I'm cold. And then the second night, I'm going to really work hard uh, the second day to fix all those problems, right? So I'm going to really make my mattress nice to the point where I can sleep on it, right? I'm going to fix the roof, fix that. So the second night, I'm sleeping there. It's still not perfect, but it's better. Right. By night three, you know, I've fixed it up again, made it even better. So night three, I'm like, you know, this shelter, it's pretty good. It, it works. All right. And then I'll tweak it again so that night four, I'm laying there and, and I'm like, this thing is awesome. And the point of the exercise is if you ever go to make that shelter again and sleep in that shelter, you've already had your learning curve, right? You're not going to start where you were on night one, right? That's the beginner level. You're going to go right to the advanced level, night four, taking into account all the small details that you've built into that thing over four nights. There's no way that you can get to night four without spending four nights there. Right. You can't do it the <laughs> night. I don't care who wrote the book or who shot the video. Right. You've got to spend those four nights to really learn that thing. You know, and, and I don't think anywhere That's is this more solid. applicable than with shelter. Right. I agree. And I, I remember reading that <clears throat> on your website, I think it was. Maybe it was a blog. But uh, that's solid advice. And, and again, to the point of what I'm trying to say here, really, you know, doing it for yourself and, and figuring all that stuff out. Uh, and I think another blog of yours, I read it. There's no quick way to do this. Uh, you can get tips and tricks and all that stuff from a YouTube video, probably the books as well. But it's the experience that's really going to make it for you. You know, you, you can't just start off there with knowing it. You got to go through that lessons learned. Same with the long log fire that I kept talking about. You know, I spent numerous nights outside and thought I was going to freeze to death, but I learned from that. I didn't just start off, hey, here's the long log fire, and it just worked, and everything was perfect, you know. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's a good, you know, it's in the era that we live in with so much access to so much information, there's an old story I heard as a young guy that there was a there was a young man and he really wanted to become good at math so he read everything he could find about math and became a great mathematician and then he really wanted to become good at baking bread so he read everything he could read on baking bread and became a great baker and then he really wanted to become a good swimmer so he read everything about swimming went down to the lake and drowned right away so the point is that you know that experiential component to learning and to knowledge it can't be overstated how important it is you know that there's certain things that, you know, I don't care what you've read unless you've done it or at least tried it enough to the point where you've failed in the field, uh, you're not going to achieve success and you're not going to become very knowledgeable with it. Solid. So, yeah, that's all I had, really. Again, wanted to have Tim over instead of mentioning I have a buddy, you know. You guys can hear it from the horse's mouth again. But uh, we appreciate him coming here. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I think you get the point, right? Wait, so, so first of all, I'm the horse because it's coming out of my mouth, and then you're going to beat the horse? <laughs> I'm not liking where this is going. <laughs> uh, always comical. Always comical. But, yeah, so, again, you know, the point, get out there and do it, you know. That's where you're going to get your experience and make your money. So, uh, Tim. One, one last point, though, like, you know, the there's a huge benefit to going out and doing it with somebody who's done it before because they can dramatically shorten that learning curve right by by working with you and helping you to helping you to see like well you know pointing out obvious flaws saying this isn't going to work because somebody who's been out there somebody like Derek who's been out there and done it slept in front of that long log fire you know 100 nights 200 nights I'm not sure how long um, you know you can take a really quick look at what someone's doing and and say you know that's really not going to work because there's a lot of bad information and misinformation in books and on youtube and there's really no uh there's no substitute for experience and you know you, you have to get that experience firsthand by doing it but somebody who's been there like derek can really help you shorten that learning curve and ultimately get you to a place that's maybe a lot a lot better and get you there a lot faster than you could do it all on your own.
Absolutely. Totally agree with that. Thanks for bringing that up too. So I, I've done stuff with different schools over the years, you know, up in Maine, down in Ohio, uh, more recently with Tim. And, you know, everyone has their own spin on things and it's the same end goal and we're pretty much doing the same things, but from a different angle, so to speak. So there's, there's a ton to learn, but when I, you know, go to these other places and learn from these people, I thought I was pretty skilled and pretty knowledgeable. And then when I show up, I'm like, well, I really don't know anything, do I? So like Tim's saying, drastically reduce the learning curve, uh, being with somebody that's been there and kind of done that, you know, so excellent point. Tim. Well, hey, thank you very much for having me out today. I, I love the look of your, uh, I love the look of your new tent here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Thanks for designing it with Tentsmiths. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, so I... You'll see that in another video. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We appreciate it. Thank and, you. Uh, see you soon. Take care. Thanks a lot, Tim. Thanks for having me.